I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. It's your choice, Grunt. Sounds like an easy job. That's the problem. I'm pure Krogan. Uvik, you were the pretender. Your head is valuable whether you're alive or dead. Just try to take it. Hello, my beautiful nerds, and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. Uh, the last episode was pretty crazy. We got Grunt's uh, loyalty, which was awesome, by taking down a Thresher Maw, and now he's as cool as Rex. Uh, he's not. Rex is still cooler. I don't care what you say, dear YouTube viewer. Uh, you're wrong. Grunt isn't as cool as Rex. Also, I want to say a huge shout out to our two newest patrons over on patreon.com slash missiledineonline, Tanya and Sean Caster. Thank you both so much for becoming patrons. Uh, also, a huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres on YouTube. You're beautiful. I love you. I want to kiss you right on the cheek. Not in like a weird way, in like a in like a European way. Do you know what I mean? Like not, it's not weird. Anyways, today is going to be a big episode. We are forced into some story stuff, like I said in the last episode, which is why we did everything we possibly could on the Normandy. We are Commander Corey Shepard, level 20 Vanguard. We have 11 bonus points, uh, or 11 points, squad points that we can use here, but we're not going to because I'm still waiting for something in particular, my friends. So we're going to hold off on that. If we look at our journal, we'll see that Stop the Collectors is what we're going to be doing today. If we try to use the map whatsoever, uh, we'll be yelled at and we'll be told that we need to go and talk to uh, this, uh, this elusive man. <laughs> this elusive man. Anyways, real quick, before we even get this started, I'm going to switch just so that my cane is as full ammo as it possibly can be for this coming mission. And yes, we are going to be taking the cane. Anyway, so we're going to come in here. We're going to see what the elusive man has. Now, this episode is going to start off with a lot less of my face. And you're welcome. Passing the elusive man through, Commander. Shepard, we caught a break. I intercepted a distress call from a Torian patrol. They stumbled onto a collector ship beyond the Corliss system. The Torians were wiped out, but not before they crippled the collector vessel. I need you to board that ship and get some hard data on the collectors. Find us a way to get to their home world. And right out of the gates, this doesn't sound right. You're telling me a Turian patrol ship, just one, was able to take down the collector ship, something that we saw early on, a collector ship was able to completely obliterate the Normandy, one of the best ships in this, in Citadel space. How is that possible? Hard to imagine how a Turian patrol could take out a collector ship. Reports indicate the hull's intact, but all systems seem to be offline. They could be making repairs as we speak. I'm not saying it won't be dangerous, but we can't let an opportunity like this slip by. He has a point, but why aren't the Turians there? If they had a patrol out there, why aren't the Turians sending a recon team in? They will, eventually but I intercepted the transmissions. In the meantime, we're feeding them false reports. You're close enough that you can be in and out before the Turians learn the truth. And uh, how did this come across your desk? You sure this information's good? Information is my weapon, Shepard. It's good. Huh. Well, suspicions aside, and uh, we're gonna be a little cautiously optimistic. This is an opportunity to find out more about the collectors, so we're gonna check it Send out. Send me the coordinates and I'll take care of it. Already sent. Once you're aboard the ship, establish an uplink with Edie. She'll mine their data for information regarding the Omega-4 relay. Good luck, Shepard. Coordinates punched in. Let's go find us a collector ship. We are going to get some revelations in this episode. New information is about to present itself that is just amazing. Uh, really like this story mission. Like I said, it is, it is, uh, you have to do this. It is obligatory. You absolutely have to do this mission. Uh, after five missions after Horizon, you're forced into this one. We got six in because we cheeky. But uh, yeah, anyways, I want to pick a squad here and I highly recommend anybody that has warp. The more warps you have on your squad right now, the easier easier this mission is going to be because it is actually a very difficult mission. Thane is wonderful. Miranda, a party of Thane and Miranda is going to kick 
but so of course we're gonna pick Miranda it also makes sense to pick her she is a Cerberus operative and she knows the inner workings of Cerberus it makes sense that her and her knowledge of Cerberus and what they have at their disposal and then seeing the collectors and learning more about them maybe she might be able to clue us in on ways that she thinks Cerberus can defeat the collectors which is kind of our goal and Morden because uh, for the exact same reasons. He's a scientist. He's able to give us more insight into the collectors than anybody else on this team. So that's who we're going to rock with, Morden and Miranda. And it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt that they're both amazing at this game. Uh, we're going to leave them as they are. Make sure you have the cane. I'm telling you, you're going to want it just like you did in Horizon, hint, hint. I also realized that these guys have been using the Tempest submachine gun the whole time, and I don't know why. So we're going to get rid of that on them, and uh, goodbye again. We have a visual on the collector ship, Commander. Very low emissions. Passive infrared temperatures suggest most systems are offline. Thrusters are cold. That thing is massive. How the hell did the Turians take it out? Radar scans do not detect any hull breaches on the side facing us. I detect no mass effect field distortions. It appears the drive core is offline. Rendezvous in 30 seconds, Commander. Good luck. Unusual ship design. Hard to track lines, angles. <sighs> Disturbing. Looks like a giant insect hive. Penetrating scans have detected an access node to uplink with collector data banks. Marking location to your hardsuit computer. This place looks amazing. Reminds me very much of a ship that's been taken over by xenomorphs, like from Alien. And uh, I'm very Shepard, into that. I've compared the ship's EM signature to known collector profiles. It is the vessel you encountered on Horizon. Maybe the defense tower softened it for the Turians. Could find missing colonists aboard, if they're still alive. So this is the exact same ship that attacked Horizon, one that defense cannons were used on and for nothing, nothing really happened to it. It took off, no problem, wasn't destroyed. But a Turian ship was able to destroy it there's no collectors that we're discovering on board where passengers might potentially board their their ship is it possible that the turians took it out from the inside or is there something else happening here let's continue on examine this pod to learn a little bit more these are the same containers the collectors used on Horizon. Only these are empty. Horrible. Trapped in pods, completely at the mercy of the collectors. Doesn't even give them a chance to fight back. We proceed forward, we're going to find an incredibly disturbing sight. A pile Horrible. of dead bodies. Despicable. Collectors just leave a pile of bodies lying around. Test subjects from control group. Discarded after experiment was over. Well, I think you'll agree with me, and for Paragon points, that uh, maybe it's better off. There are worse things than death. Like being a test subject for twisted aliens. This was wrong. Inhumane. Even if collectors needed to kill for experiments, could have ended lives painlessly. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Because it didn't. Just goes to show exactly what we're up against and why the collectors absolutely must 
be stopped. Continue through the Xenomorph ship. Alien isolation style. Find more bodies, more human bodies. Potentially the colonists from Horizon. And who knows how many others. Right over here, we can get 7,500 credits by salvaging that collector tech. And then somehow beyond... And, hey, listen, I don't know. There's a med kit here. We'll go ahead and pick that up for 100 credits. And now that we have that med kit, uh, we are going to go ahead and use this control terminal. But before you interact with this... Please save your game. Uh, I highly, highly recommend saving your game here, keeping it forever, uh, because this is a very important decision that's about to be made. We're about to learn a, a, a breathtaking revelation uh, in this game. Probably the biggest twist in Mass Effect 2 so far. It's awesome. Uh, but more than that, right after that, we immediately get to pick something that makes our character substantially better or not as good as it could be. So keep that in mind. Oops. And let's go ahead and let's see what we have in store for us if we click on this control terminal. That's a collector. Were they experimenting on one of their own? Edie, I'm uploading the data from this terminal. See if you can figure out what they were up to. Data received. Analyzing. The collectors were running baseline genetic comparisons between their species and humanity. That seems like a weird thing to do. Are they looking for similarities? I have no hypothesis on their motivations. All I have are the preliminary results. They reveal something remarkable. A quad-strand genetic structure identical to traces collected from ancient ruins. Only one race is known to have this structure. The Protheans. Protheans didn't vanish. They're just working for the Reapers now. These are no longer Prothean Shepherd, but their genes show distinct signs of extensive genetic rewrite. The Reapers have repurposed them to suit their needs. You'd think somebody would have picked up on this. No one has had an opportunity to study a collector genetic code in this detail. I've already matched 2,000 alleles to recorded fragments. This collector likely descends from a Prothean colony in the Styx Theta Cluster, but there are signs of extreme alteration. Three fewer chromosomes, reduced heterochromatin structure, elimination of superfluous junk sequences. That is quite the revelation, my friends. Reapers didn't wipe out the Protheans. They turned them into monsters and enslaved them. Still, they're working for the Reapers now, and we have to stop them. They're not doing to us what they did to the Protheans. Let's find what we need before the Collectors come to salvage this vessel. Move out. And here we have it, my friends. This is the advanced weapon training. One of the most powerful decisions we get to make in Mass Effect 2 is right now on the collector ship, the advanced weapon training. And what you choose and what you pick here isn't necessarily going to be, well, what's the best on paper? It's how you play the game. It's your class, your squad, the build that you've chosen, and just your general play style. So don't overthink this too much. Don't weigh yourself down. Yes, it's an important decision. Yes, it carries over into New Game Plus no matter what. You can't just make a new decision. Whatever you choose here is going to be what you choose, and that's it. Don't stress. Don't overthink it. So if you are a soldier, I would recommend picking up whatever weapon you gravitate towards. The Revenant is a great weapon if you choose assault training, and the Widow is a wonderful sniper rifle. Uh, arguably maybe not even arguably it is the best uh sniper rifle in the game the widow is incredibly good uh there are a ton of shotgun choices that we have now in the legendary edition especially because it just comes with the dlc and the geth plasma shotgun it's just ridiculously good so this is a hard thing to uh to to say to get um there are other guns that are also really good like the scimitar shotgun and you can just shoot a bunch of times if you're into shotguns. So it really is about your play style. If you want a very one shot, one kill, high risk, high reward play style, the Claymore is the way to go. But again, it's about your play style, especially if you're a soldier. If you are an adept, I would recommend the assault rifle. However, the locust that you get in Kasumi's loyalty mission kind of makes assault rifles bleh. Uh, that doesn't mean there's one in particular that's incredibly good, so you could do that. Sniper Rifles on an Adept is also fairly fun, and uh, but you already have such long-range capabilities. Uh, in Claymores, I just don't see why, again, or shotguns in general, 
could be useful as an adept, but if I just don't know why you're not playing Vanguard at that point. Engineers, sniper rifles, if you are a fan of using the uh, combat drone, I think sniper rifle is wonderful for if you're using it and if you can still hit your shots even with it that without that time uh dilation effect that happens on sniper rifles for soldiers and infiltrators uh again or or assault rifle you could go shotgun but again i just think you're going to be better off with the assault rifle especially a certain one that you can get and infiltrator like i said uh sniper rifle just uh, that's it uh, Sentinel, I would recommend, I actually would recommend the, uh, the shotgun for a Sentinel. I don't think there's any reason to choose assault rifle. Uh, yes, that certain assault rifle, the Matic, is really, really good, really, really powerful. It can be very useful for the Sentinel, but I also think that you are super defensive. You can get away with using the shotgun and pretty much compensate for any offensive damage that you might be lacking. And here we go. The juicy one the one we've all been waiting for vanguard what is my choice going to be so here's the deal and i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna show some gameplay of me actually practicing with the with the claymore i chose the claymore originally and i was having some fun with it and i was trying to get this trick down and i'm very bad at the reload trick i have a lot of difficulty with it uh because it it really feels like it slows me down uh once you're better at it and you can do the reload trick it's so the reload trick for those that don't know is basically you 60% of the way through a shotgun reload you'll hear a click if you melee at that time it automatically goes right back and you can shoot again so the way that you do it is you literally just hold down the shoot button and then when you hear that noise you hit melee and it shoots again you have to be it has to be like really good aim and all of that to make it worth it the claymore is super fun to use if you don't believe me look it up on youtube there are some crazy crazy things that people are able to do with the claymore it is wonderful it is so fun and it is way too inconsistent for me personally to use uh which is why i'm going to go assault rifle training there are people that say sniper rifle you should go uh you should go sniper rifle to, so that you shore up your close range or your long range weakness i i do not think that shoring up weaknesses is what you should do. I am a firm believer that you need to make your strengths better. That's just that I that's just the way that I play this game. That's the way that I think of this game. So we're gonna go the assault rifle training. And that was a really hard decision for me, guys. I'm not joking. I played through the next coming section, uh, next section a bunch of different times to get a feel for what I actually want to use. So with that, we now have the ability to use assault rifles. We've never been able to do that before, and now we are a vanguard with an AR. And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing, my friends. So uh, so we have it right now, the Vindicator equipped, but that's not actually what we're going to use. So skip this power cells for now. We'll grab this element zero that we can see, and then luckily there is a weapons locker here. Again, why there's a weapons locker on a collector ship no flipping idea but we're gonna go ahead we're actually going to change our gun and we're going to switch it to the matic heavy rifle that we picked up from the shop uh on omega way back in the day we actually bought the geth pulse rifle or um the geth the geth stuff and the matic i think at the same exact time so i highly 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 recommend this rifle right here for medium uh range it is a it is crazy good guys it's so so flipping good this weapon so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna pick this uh we're going to switch out of the cane real quick leave this go back and put the cane back on so that our ammo should be completely restocked and we'll see that we're we're pretty good we can pick up these power cells for now for 100 credits guys this is an incredible rifle highly recommend it and yes it was a very hard decision continuing on we'll see so many pods up on the ceiling more holding containers. There must be hundreds of them. How many do you think are full? Too many. I detect no signs of life in the pod, Shepard. It is probable the victims inside died when the ship lost primary power. Somehow, some way, they lost primary power. How did that happen? Anyways, we can head over here and grab this collector technology for 15,000 credits. Oh my God, I'm super into that. And we'll continue on. We're gonna get a little bit more dialogue as we proceed. Trust me, I, <laughs> you guys have no idea how long I hemmed and hawed about choosing that weapon. And if you can pull off the claymore, let me know in the in the in the uh, in the comments below. Actually, let me know what you guys 
wanted to see me choose because maybe if there's a lot of you that are like go back choose the claymore we want to see you struggle with the claymore uh maybe i'll this do it but come in handy other than that i don't know man we'll get that damage protection uh research which is going to be super good Commander, for us you gotta hear this. on a hunch i asked Edie to run an analysis on the ship i compared the em profile against data recorded by the original normandy two years ago they are an exact match the same ship dogging me for two years way beyond coincidence something doesn't add up commander watch your back exactly this is the same ship that destroyed the normandy this is the same ship that attacked horizon in freedom's progress this is the same ship that has been after commander shepherd for a very specific reason and something that is i love in jennifer hale's performance here as femshep that i don't hear as much they could take every human in the terminus systems and not have enough to fill these pods only one conclusion collectors targeting earth not if we stop them i love so what i was saying is jennifer hale's performance here you can hear her suspicion of what's happening right out of the gate as soon as she talks to the elusive man she just isn't putting it she's she's putting two and two together that something doesn't seem right and i i kind of miss that in the male ship which is the only one that i've played by the way so it's very cool to hear it in this one all of these orange lights are collector pods Morden pointing out that their only there. plan control panel on the platform is Where to attack are the Earth. Of the collector crew? Careful, Shepard. Something doesn't feel right about this. Miranda noticing the same thing, finally. Let's go ahead and use this command console to contact the Normandy. Edie, I'm setting up a bridge between you and the collector ship. See if you can get anything useful from the data banks. Data mine in progress, Shepard. Uh, that can't be good. Everyone's all right, Joker. What just happened? Major power surge. Everything went dark, but we're back up now. I managed to divert the majority of the overload to non-critical systems. Shepard, it was not a malfunction. This was a trap. And here we go my friends the hardest part of mass effect 2 begins right now we're gonna go ahead and put our friends in a cover make sure we have the matic equipped because we want to put as much damage with inferno ammo onto this scion as possible because once uh this platform arrives here we're gonna have to deal with these guys instead which is collectors who will very very quickly become harbinger and we do not my friends we do not want that we want them dead immediately we do not want to deal with that and we're gonna hope that we can kill them before it becomes a problem come on melee Woo! yes perfect all right so that's what we wanted we wanted to kill those before they became the evil evil harbinger we're gonna see if we can get a warp on this and we want to kill this scion as quickly as possible because another platform is going to come in three total with collectors and you can see now why i chose the matic over the uh this immediately is going to have enemy uh, an enemy become Harbinger. And another platform is coming in with a second Scion. But honestly, not that big of a deal when you're dealing with, uh, with these enemies. So we just want to make sure that we are hitting Harbinger as much as we can. We're actually going to switch now to the Scimitar. And I can show you the power of this gun. We're going to go ahead and charge... And we'll go ahead and hopefully... Come on! It's not letting me... It's not letting me charge. Let me charge. Let, let me charge. Oh, this game. Oh, this game, guys. I don't know why, but this game... This level with these darn platforms makes charging so difficult. But we're going to go ahead. We're going to now come to the Scion. A third 
wave of collectors has just arrived, but we're not gonna worry about that. Instead, we're just gonna try to kill this Scion before this Scion becomes a problem. We're gonna go ahead and charge now. Hopefully, our comrades in arms here do not die. It looks like they might. They're looking pretty low. Charging this guy again. See if we can kill him before he becomes, uh, before he does that. Good. And now that once the Scion is dead, then we can kind of grab that right away, which is going to refill all of our ammo. And then we can start dealing with the collectors that arrived. These guys, we weren't going to be able to kill in time. They were going to, no matter what, they were going to become, they were, they were going to become a uh, harbinger. It's not like we could prevent that spawn. And it's also not like we needed to prevent that spawn, to be totally honest with you. So we'll hit this and we're actually going to switch back to the shotgun. This scimitar shotgun is actually very good against, um, against enemies that you need to kill quickly like this. And it's one of the reasons why I just don't really like, yeah, it takes a little longer, but it's one of the reasons I just don't see why you would choose. We're going to go ahead and charge him. And my friends, that is going to be the one of the hardest parts of the game completely done. The platforms are absolutely wild, my friends. This part is so tough, uh, but we were able to get through it without using a med kit. We need Edie to get us out of here. She needs to take control of these. Man, that fight is absolutely bonkers. It doesn't hurt or doesn't help that uh, charging on these is just so, so buggy because of the different levels and everything. And like, you need to back away from the cover to be able to charge. And then sometimes it just charge won't work, uh, but we were able to do it. That fight is done. Now I'm never doing it ever again. Uh, I recommend, I actually really recommend the scimitar for this for this particular fight. It feels very good. The combination of the scimitar with the matic just feels nice on insanity. It really, really does. So let's go ahead and contact the console for another big revelation, my friends. I've regained control of the platform, Shepard. I knew you wouldn't let us down, Edie. I always work at optimal capacity. Did you get what we needed? I found data that would help us successfully navigate the Omega-4 relay. I have also found a Turing distress call that served as the lure for this trap. The collector's rich source. It is unusual. What are you getting at? Turian emergency channels have secondary encryption. It is present, but corrupted in the message. It is not possible that the elusive man would believe the distress call was genuine. Why are you so sure? I found the anomaly with Cerberus detection protocols. He wrote them. He knew it was a trap? Why would he send us into a trap? Now, we have two options here. We can confirm what we knew was happening regardless. It was just a little too good to be true. Or we can try to keep things civil, try to focus on our mission, get it done, and then deal with the elusive man afterwards, which is exactly what we're going to do. We don't have time to throw blame around. We'll question him when we're out. Behavior within norms for Cerberus, not unexpected. No, the commander's right. There must be some other explanation. Uh, commander, we got another problem. The collector ship is powering up. You need to get out of there before their weapons come online. I'm not losing another Normandy. I do not have full control of their systems. I will do what I can. Sending coordinates for shuttle extraction. Come on, let's move. Now, I actually really, really enjoy, uh, Garrus has a line there that's actually really good where he's like, oh, now is not the right time to become an optimist, Shepard. Um, and, I, and I like that. Different characters are gonna have different reactions to to the elusive man betraying us. I like Morden's the most though. It's the most like, yep. What, what were you expecting? Anyways, the ship is coming alive, my friends. And we're going to continue down here to find yet another med kit for some odd reason. We're gonna make sure that we're good to go. We got Inferno ammo on all of our weapons. We're gonna come down here. We're gonna need to deal with four enemies that are gonna start popping up. And I highly recommend saving your game. If you died after that platform, it would just be sad days. We'll go ahead and grab this technology here for 7,500 credits, and then we're gonna be dealing with, you guessed it, we're gonna be uh, some more collectors. And we'll go ahead and start charging these. And Harbinger will very quickly take these over as well. So we're gonna see if we can do this without that happening. Gonna charge this one. 
and we'll go ahead and make sure that it dies as quickly as possible harbinger never took control but you love oh man you love to see it so we're going to continue down here and get ready for another huge firefight that's going to be a little bit of a problem i recommend saving once again and we're gonna grab these thermal clips over here make sure we are completely full we're gonna send our friends into cover here cover. we ourselves are gonna grab cover here switch to the matic and we want to see what we can do here it looks like miranda was taking some damage uh and like i said you'll be able to see these guys do so much damage so quickly but even more important we're gonna take out this drone that's up there just so that he's not he doesn't have the the high road on us we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna charge harbinger so that we can try to get some attacks in on this drone get him out of here we're gonna go ahead and charge yet again get that back we're gonna go ahead and warp here as well and like i said this is gonna be pretty tough but you can not really pursue into this zone and just kind of take them out as you go so we're gonna see if we can take down this guardian now which uh warp is almost on cooldown we're gonna go ahead and charge here we want to be careful not to push too far into this because it's actually just going to make more enemies uh, approach faster so i'm gonna get to cover here real quick we have an enemy over here uh it looks like two of them an assassin is going to actually come from our our left as well so we want to make sure that we're paying attention to that and that we are doing what needs to be done we're gonna go ahead and incinerate this collector and then we're going to charge the assassin that i was telling you about that would show up it did i wasn't a liar we're gonna go ahead and uh warp it and there's a drone up here as well that we're gonna go ahead and use as charge candy just so that i can get my shields back and we'll go ahead and finish that real quick looks like harbinger hasn't showed up again which is good we have another drone here we're gonna go ahead and warp it and then uh neural and then we can finish him off and we're gonna have two new enemies that are gonna start showing up now these are called well harbinger showing up but these are called abominations they're basically like husks but they will explode when they get near you and when they die so we want to make sure that we are uh not getting hit by those so we're gonna wait they work the same way as Hus, so if their feet leave the ground, they're dead. Focus on Shepard. Reserve Shepard's body if possible. Unfortunately, oh, thought I was gonna die, didn't die. Charging this assassin and using up here as cover. We're gonna immediately dip into cover up here. Whew, I had a I had a hyper focus there for a second. I hope you guys are able to see how insane this section of the game actually is. It is wild. You have enemies coming from all over, and it's you know if you're if you're playing an infiltrator or anything like that, and you can kind of hang back and like get some good snipes and stuff, you can make this this stuff so much better for yourself by taking out enemies before they even become a problem. But see the power of the matic. Who even cares if you can only get one hit? I believe that's every enemy here now. Good job, my friends. You guys kicked butt. Right here, we can grab another power cells, uh, which is going to replenish all of our ammo and give us 100 credits. I don't think there's anything up here, so we can continue to where the other items are, where we can find refined element zero and another med kit, which, by the way, I just want to point out, we have not used any. We are awesome. And we're going to go ahead and... Uh, and head this way i want to save as well before we head down here once we drop down this is a point of no return and we have one hecka of a boss fight before before we get out of here after we're saved we're gonna pop down here and get ready for like the boss fight of this level it is praetorian number two my friends we're gonna put as much damage as we can into it try to see before it can even become a huge problem you'll see husks are here as well we're gonna go ahead and switch to the m920 cane now that we put some damage in and hopefully we can go ahead and hit it before it does any of its barrier stuff looks like that was a direct hit which you love to see and then unfortunately for us it's gonna start doing its it's uh i'm mad thing and it's gonna make a barrier appear and unfortunately we also have collectors that are going to start coming in as well and we want to see if we can not have our team die to those collectors unfortunately morden did go down but we're actually going to i'm not going to leave morden dead because i really need his incinerate if at any point you run out of ammo here we're going to just reposition and get down into cover uh if at any point you run out of ammo 
something that you can do and you can charge this praetorian by the way i don't recommend it because if you do end up charging it let's go ahead and pop unity uh it's going to immediately just crash down on you and redo its barriers and we don't that's that's not what we want it to do uh i'm gonna go ahead and actually just see if this will do anything i know it's not going to but if it does damage it does damage so unfortunately uh we're going to try to hit it with a warp switch to uh well we don't really have an option here and see if we can unfortunately it's barriers back i mean this is this is the issue with praetorian right it's it's just always gonna have it's just always gonna have um barriers always so what we could do here is we can keep pumping damage into it but at some point we're gonna need to go get right after this beam uh we're gonna run over here grab some thermal clips and there's also power cells that i was mentioning that we can grab which is going to give us a uh, complete refill of the matic which we're going to immediately swap to that because he's almost out of his barrier we're gonna hit that perfect and then hopefully we'll hit with an incinerate as well we're gonna pop out of cover and hopefully finish the praetorian before he barriers come on yeah Woo. spicy we did it oh man Woo. that was crazy let's go ahead and grab whatever ammo we need and continue on as we approach this door How rude. I have successfully opened a door on the opposite wall. I will keep it open as long as I can. Thank you, Edie. There, where we boarded. We must be getting close to the end. Oh, and this was the control terminal where we chose the weapons and everything, remember? Uh, we're going to continue this way where we can find yet another collector technology for 7,500 credits and a control terminal that we can access for some tech damage, baby, making Morden uh, even more useful than he already is. Garrus more useful than he already is. Uh, but we're not done yet. There is even more that we can do, and I would recommend, yet again, saving. So now that you've saved, hopefully, you want to put your uh, your friends in a, into About cover it. here. We're going to actually put them, cover. like, right over here. I don't know if that's going to be the best spot for them, but it should be okay. As we proceed up here, we're actually going to be dealing with a ton of enemies, including abominations, which you know how much I love to deal with. Those are the most fun. We're going to go ahead and pop his barrier and then incinerate him as well, getting that assassin fairly low. Abominations are going to come over on this side here, so we're just going to kill them real quick, and another one is going to appear in front of us, which we can take out as well. We'll charge it so that it explodes. It doesn't really matter that it hit us because uh, we can just bounce back into cover here. Watch out for Harbinger, and we're actually going to see if we can slam this, uh, almost killing that collector, and by almost, I mean not even a little. We're going to go ahead and take out this abomination that just spawned in as well. And let's go ahead and warp. Which should take out that enemy. And this drone can be taken out as well. And we don't want to charge up here because, like I said, if we do, a ton more enemies are going to approach. And it looks like this is exactly where we want Harbinger because he's just kind of hitting a post and not doing anything. And we'll go ahead and incinerate. You can see how much incineration does, and that's not even the correct ability. I kind of went the wrong way there. So we're looking a little bit not great, so we're going to go ahead and charge this Guardian. Ammo is looking a little low, so we're going to kind of reposition here, grab these, and this is where more enemies are going to come in. And it's so hard to see them for some reason, uh, but we're going to go ahead, pop into here, and hopefully kill these before another Harbinger rears his ugly, ugly head. That one is dead. We're going to go ahead and charge this Scion, turn around, and immediately go for this drone, who, again, we do not want to become Harbinger because, uh, unfortunately, he's going to become Harbinger anyways because I never get what I want. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and warp. And charge. Charge isn't working. No charge. Charge. There we go. Incinerating. Popping in. And my friends, now all that's left is this Scion, which is honestly, when they're by themselves, not a huge problem, not a huge threat at all. We'll go ahead and charge, get our shields back, and we can just keep pumping into them. And we're gonna need to charge again. Maddox only got three shots to make them count. And let's just go ahead and finish them off with our allies. That is 
it, my friends, for the most part of any of the combat that we will have to do in this section of Mass Effect 2, one of the hardest sections of the entire game. Uh, no, no joke. I mean, it's this part is just absolutely bonkers and I love it. It's so fun. So we're going to go ahead and head the only direction we can hopefully get off this Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. So let's head out of here. We're going to actually discover that there are husks as we are trying to leave their last ditch effort to try to get us out of here. We're going to go ahead because we're Vanguard. We're going to charge. We're just going to run past all those husks. There is absolutely no reason to fight them. There we go. You heard the man. Everybody on to the Normandy. Move. Strap in, people! I'm gonna make it work for it this time. My friends, we have done it. The Collector Ship. We got the information we needed. We learned a ton about the Collectors. We are done with one of the hardest missions, I think, in this entire game. So with that, we leveled up. We are now level 21. One additional squad point has been gained. Mission summary gathered vital intel regarding collectors and Omega-4 relay. With Shepard's escape, Harbinger knows our true capabilities and will have to adopt new tactics. We'll have to be careful as Harbinger's information network may rival Cerberus or Shadow Brokers. Also appears impossible to block his ability to possess minions. ED's work was exceptional, however, proving the value of shackled AI. We got the assault rifle training, because that's the weapon that we chose. We got the damage protection upgrade that's going to be so nice to have. Tech damage, which is going to be useful anytime we use Garrus or Morden or anybody that has a uh, tally. Uh, credits, we have 75,000 credits from that mission and 500 elements zero. And we get the trophy Ghost Ship. Great movie. Call coming in from the Elusive Man, Commander. Figure you've got a few words for him too. Well, he did sell us out, so. Shepard, looks like Edie extracted some interesting data before the collector ship came back online. Edie told us the distress call originated from the collectors. You betrayed us, just like I knew you would. We're at war. The Collectors are taking humans, and every minute we waste is one more we give the enemy to prepare. I know the stakes, but we're supposed to be on the same side, and I can't trust you. Without that information, we don't reach the Collector homeworld, and you and every other human may as well be dead. It was a trap, but I was confident in your abilities. And don't forget Edie. The Collectors couldn't have anticipated her. You could have told me the plan. You say I'm important, but you sure try hard to get me killed. I needed the Collectors to believe they had the upper hand. Telling you could have tipped them off in any number of ways. Besides, I wouldn't have sent you in if I didn't think you could succeed. I don't risk people. There are always alternatives. You may not like being on the receiving end, neither would I. But the facts are with me. As much as we try to avoid them, these decisions need to be made. But more importantly, it paid off. Edie confirmed our suspicions. The Reapers and Collector ships use an advanced identify friend foe system that the relays recognize. All we need to do is get our hands on one of those IFFs. I was just on the Collector ship. Why didn't you say anything about finding their IFF? As I said, Edie just confirmed it. Besides, you wouldn't have had time to find and extract it, but we have options. An Alliance science team recently determined that the Great Rift on the planet Klendigan is actually an impact crater from a mass accelerator weapon. 
A very old mass accelerator. I sent a team to find either the weapon or its target. They found both. The weapon was defunct, but it helped us plot the flight path of the intended target. A 37 million year old derelict reaper. We found it damaged and trapped in the gravity of a brown dwarf. Aren't brown dwarfs basically stars that didn't quite make it? Simply put, but accurate. They're gas giants that don't quite have the masses of stars. Expect gale force winds and extremely high temperatures. The Reaper has a mass effect field that keeps it in orbit, likely an automated response to the external threats. It's stable, but I won't call it safe. Absolutely bonkers. A Reaper that was destroyed 37 million years ago by one of the races that presumably was destroyed and harvested by the Reapers. Interesting. I saw what Sovereign did to the Citadel fleet. Hard to imagine anything could stop something that powerful. This vessel is a relic from a battle waged while mammals took their first steps on Earth. There's no trace of the species that took the shot. Perhaps it was their one moment of defiance before being wiped out. And what's the catch? I get the feeling this isn't going to be a simple swing by and pick up our package. We lost contact with Dr. Chandana's team shortly after they boarded. Initial reconnaissance revealed no clues, and it was too risky to commit more resources. But now we need that IFF. I'll forward the coordinates to Joker. In the meantime, I suggest you tell your crew I didn't risk their lives unnecessarily. It will make things easier going forward. Edie, tell the crew to assemble. We've got a lot to talk about. Of course, Shepard. So the elusive man didn't sell us out. Could have fooled me. Lied to us, used us, needed access to the collector databanks. Necessary risk. Yeah, unfortunately, I agree. There really wasn't any other choice. Let's just hope this IFF works. My analysis is accurate, Shepard. I have also determined the approximate location of the collector homeworld based on navigational data from their vessel. Can't be right. Better run the diagnostics, Joker. Looks like our AI's got a bug in the software. My calculations are correct. The Collector homeworld is located within the galactic core. Can't be. The core is just black holes and exploding suns. There are no habitable planets there. Could be an artificial construction. Space station protected by powerful mass effect fields and radiation shields. Even the Collectors don't have that kind of technology. Collectors are just servants of our real enemy, and we've all seen what their masters are capable of. They built the mass relays and the Citadel. Who's to say they can't build a space station surrounded by black holes? No wonder nobody's ever returned from a trip through the Omega-4 mass relay. The logical conclusion is that a small safe zone exists on the far side of the relay, a region where ships can survive. Standard relay transit protocols would not allow safe transport. Drift of several thousand kilometers is common and would be fatal in the galactic core. The Reaper IFF must trigger the relay to use more advanced encrypted protocols. Well, we have a couple of options, and none of this really matters to... We are not thrust into something if we choose to... Let's go get that IFF. Instead, though, we are going to choose we need to build our team because this, my friends, is Act 3 of Mass Effect 2. Just because we can follow the collectors through the relay doesn't mean we can take them out. I don't want to go after them until I know we're ready. Sooner or later, we need that IFF. I say, why wait? It's a derelict Reaper. What if the Collectors are waiting for us? We may want to build up our team before we take that kind of risk. Yep, exactly. The more people we have on our side, the better our chances of success. We need to keep building up the team. It's your call, Commander. Whatever you decide, we're with you. Even Jacob's advice is terrible. If we were to go to get the IFF right now, it would lead to horrible things happening for our friends. Horrible. Also, I want to point out that our Paragon is pretty maxed out. We got 12 points to spend. Uh, we are with so many points. But we're going to go ahead and real quick just research the stuff that we got, which is damage protection. You love to see it. And we also got hard shields, which would have been so 
useful to have before that previous mission because you actually can get it. Shepherd shields take 20% less damage. Ugh, gosh, I wish I would have had that before that. And we can go ahead and increase this tech damage, which is all we can do. And that is it for weapon upgrades, which means that it is time for us to go shopping. There is definitely some shopping that needs to happen. Let's see what Morden's up to, if anything. Shepherd, how can I help? Have you got a minute? Yes, good timing. Perfect. Fact. Excellent. Made breakthrough. Can share results while next samples grow. Hate waiting for culture analysis. Never fast enough. Usually no result in advance. Just checking work. Have to be careful. Getting off track. Discovery. Based on Prothean Collector Connection, can examine technology, chart Reaper species modification, fall of Protheans. Uh, I know somebody that might be into that. Tell me what happened. Early stages similar to indoctrination can guess captured Protheans lost intelligence over several cloned generations. Cybernetic augmentation widespread afterward. As Protheans failed, Reapers added tech to compensate. Mental capacity almost gone, replaced by overworked sensory input transfers. Transmitting data to masters. Is there anything we can do to help them? No. No glands replaced by tech. No digestive system replaced by tech. No soul replaced by tech. Whatever they were, gone forever. Understand now? No art, no culture. Closer to husks than slaves. Tools for reapers. Protheans dead. Collectors just final insult. Must be destroyed. What is it about the Collector's modifications that bothers you so much? Disrupts socio-technological balance. All scientific advancement due to intelligence overcoming, compensating for limitations. Can't carry a load, so invent wheel. Can't catch food, so invent spear. Limitations. No limitations, no advancement. No advancement, culture stagnates. Works other way, too. Advancement before culture is ready. Disastrous. Saw it with Krogan. Uplifted by Salarians. Disastrous. Our fault. You blame the Solarians for what the Krogan did? Yes, like giving nuclear weapons to cavemen. Krogan unprepared for spaceflight, technological advance. Krogan could have evolved alone, worked out aggression, been ready to use new tech responsibly. Instead, Solarians came, disrupted Krogan culture, used Krogan as blunt instrument against Ratnai. Short-sighted, foolish. If you feel that way, why did you work on the genophage modification? Talked before, best option, that or kill them all. If around during first contact, would have argued against it. Wasn't there then. Do what I can. You said the collectors had no art. I had no idea you cared about that kind of thing. Personal interest negligible. Sang a little. Multi-species productions for cultural exploration. Gilbert and Sullivan always had me do the patter songs. But not about me. Cultural artistic expression reflects philosophical evolution, interest in growth, perspective, observation, interpretation. Suspect you won't see any art in collector base. Culturally dead. Tools for Reapers. Worse than the Geth. More importantly, Morden sang? I'm sorry, I know that was important, but you perform Gilbert and Sullivan? I am the very model of a scientist Salarian. I've studied species Turian, Asari, and Batarian. I'm quite good at genetics as a subset of biology because I am an expert which I know is a tautology. My xenoscience studies range from urban to agrarian. I am the very model of a scientist solarian. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think you needed any more motivation than you already had to stop the Collectors. Enjoyed challenge. Saw necessity of attack on Collectors after Plague on Omega. Their work, my people. Hard to care about two armies. One wins, one loses. Always work to do after. Now, have more context. See what Collectors are. Wasn't looking for other work before. Don't mean to imply that. Just committed now. Won't let you down. I believe that you won't, Morden. Thanks for sharing what you've learned, Morden. Proud to be here, Shepard. Thank you for including me. What a man. He can sing, he can dance, he can he can do it all. I love, I just, I know I've said it before, but I just love Morden so gosh dang much, my friends. And Kelly. You had me so worried when you were trapped on the collector ship. Thank goodness for Edie. Yeah. Worried? You do care. 
That sounds like more than just professional concern, Kelly. You're more than just my commander. You're my friend. Edie brought you back to me. If she had a body, I'd give her a big hug. Me too. What about what about me, Kelly? What's just uh I'm standing right here. Where's my hug? Oh, we get a hug. Welcome back, ma'am. Anyway, how may I help you, Commander? You're we can also go ahead and check our unread messages. And the only one we have is from Shaman Erdnot. Damn it, I hate these things, but you need to hear this. You're part of Grunt's Krant, and you're his leader, so keep him alive. Here, I have to stay polite to play the role. But our people are dying. Krogan have always valued survival over tradition. If we're going to survive as a people, we need your fat, grown grunt. Ogier was a madman, but he was a madman with a plan, and that's more than most have on this ball of rock. So bring him back from your damn mission. My people need him. If you all get killed, I'll piss on your graves. Yeah, that's a Krogan message, if any uh, I've ever heard. Also, we can head over here, and we should have some dialogue, I believe. So the Collectors were once Protheans, repurposed by the Reapers. What a sad end. Makes you wonder if the Keepers on the Citadel were once something different. Yes, it actually really does, and they probably were. So we're going to head down to Engineering and talk to the few people that we actually can, being Grunt and Zaid, to see if they have anything to say about what just happened. Shepard. Let's see if Grunt has anything Just to say. In. I'm branching out. Got a list of enemies now. They all give me joy when I picture cutting them, crushing them. There's this one imprint, a Solarian with the, what are they, the, the things on his head pulled apart? Bet it caused a generation of revenge. What is that, a few weeks for them? So what did you want? Huh. You know, I kind of thought connecting with your past would bring stability. <laughs> See, now we're having fun. Me remembering good deaths, and you with your, your funny human thing you're doing. My job is to hurt things. Direction, control, that's your job, Battlemaster. You're why I'm a soldier, not dead or crazed like an animal. Thank you, Shepard. You gave me purpose. Now, let's find something big to kill. Grunt. Boy, you're gonna regret those words. Shepard. Just checking Battle in. Battlemaster, I have everything. Clan, kin, and enemies to fight. You're awesome. Nice. Grunt, you're awesome. Let's go check in with Zaid real quick. We want to ignore anything. Well, I guess we can always see. We're gonna ignore Jack and Tally because they have loyalty. But what about these? You think we'll make it through this? Of course we will, Gabby. I mean, as long as we take down the Collectors, it's all worth it. Even if we don't make it. Don't even think that. We'll make it through. If I have anything to say about it, yes, you absolutely, absolutely will. So, let's go ahead and check in with Saeed. Collectors and Protheans. It's all about my pay grade. I'm more used to putting down rebellions, tracking down bastards who didn't pay their gambling debts. Still, even I know a galaxy-shaking revelation when I hear one. Makes fighting land wars for pay seem small time. Uh, because it is. I can't believe the Collectors were once Protheans. I always pictured Protheans being regal, not giant bugs. Who knows what the Reapers did to them? Creepy. Yep. And that's all that we can get in the clue crew deck, so let's head on out of here. The Layer of the Shadow Broker is coming up, which, by the way, let me know in the comments below when you guys want me to do the Layer of the Shadow Broker. I think that the next episode is the best time to do the Layer of the Shadow Broker. We have a bunch of shopping to do, research to get, all of that stuff before we really kick off and do kick some booty. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Again, another huge shout out to our two newest patrons, uh, uh, Tanya and Sean Caster. Thank you guys so much for becoming patrons and supporting us over on patreon.com slash online. Sincerely appreciate you. And a huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres. I don't know what's happening with the controller. It just keeps dying. But we are a level 21 Vanguard. Nine more levels to go. Level 30 is the level cap in Mass Effect 2. And you just bet your booty that we are going to hit it my friends thank you so much for watching and again let me know about the shadow layer of the shadow broker until next time friends love you never give up never surrender goodbye everyone